Welcome to another edition of COPE, um, Community's Own and Personal Elevation. We come to you from the Hard Rock Cafe and we're broadcasted, of course, on Channel 58 and 158 on the Cornwall Communications Network, CEETV. That's C as in comely, E as in entertainment, E as in education, TV. All right? Your station for the nation. And we try to reach out and touch various topics, talk to various people about many things that are of interest. Today, before I introduce um, my guest, I just want to talk a little bit as we're in the, in the midst of a teacher strike. And before deciding what it was that I wanted to talk about before I started the interview, I had my reservations about bringing up this topic about the teacher strike because on one hand, you're supportive of the teachers wanting to get paid because from time immemorial we hear about teachers as civil servants are supposed to hold strain and, and bear the brunt of the, the sacrifices for the nation in order for government to be able to do this, do that and the other. And I can tell you, part of the reason why whole scale sympathy cannot be given to government is because we look on and we see government being profligate, totally wasteful and spending unnecessarily. And I'm talking from the People's National Party right up until this present administration. And while they're doing that, they're telling teachers and various other people to hold strain. Now, if you want teachers to hold strain, then you hold strain too. Hold strain on some of the excesses because people see it. It's conspicuous consumption. So it's not hidden. We all see the new vehicles that are being purchased. We all see the this and we see the that. Oh, come on, we have to do better than that in 2018. We have to do a whole lot better than that. Now, with that said, I have a problem with some teachers. Many of them are not committed to the job. The job is little more than just a paycheck when it arrives to them. They're not committed to helping the students to really excel. If that was not the case, we wouldn't have some of the situations that we have right now. So many of the present day teachers are resting on the contribution and the work done by past teachers who really used to be committed truly committed and respected and respectable to the cause. And it's the same way we see the police going. Back in the day, people used to have a lot of respect for police. Not anymore, because over a period of time, the police, to various reasons, have allowed their status and stature to be eroded in the society by being involved in all kind of things that are just totally unbecoming. You understand? The nation cry out for reasonableness, reasonable people in order for us to move this country forward. One of the things that we, we are too politically activated at all times, everything that we do and say must be motivated by whom we choose, whom we love, whom we see, whom we say, whom we favor. We cannot do that. And at the end of the day, when election is finished, the politicians ought to know that the leader for the country, the Prime Minister, the Prime Minister for Jamaica, he needs to stop wearing them damn green ties. And the PNP needs to stop wearing them orange ties and, and, and red ties and go back to being Jamaicans. You're representing Jamaica. When I look and see my Prime Minister in a green tie, I say, Jesus, I don't mean I represent. He not represent me. He come out for give some JLP people some message. And if I see the leader of opposition, our prime minister, in a red or orange time, I say, Lord God, boy, that is so unbecoming. We can't do those things. But back to the teachers. We need them to step up their game too. They demand money, pay them. But demand that the standard be raised and that the commitment be made. We have classrooms now where teachers are supposed to be in the classroom and they're not there. Them go and don't turn and run their own errand. And one of the things that the teachers need to come out of, because it's really eroding the profession, is this hustling in schools. Stop the vending, man. Leave vending to vendors. Teachers in a school are sell drinks, cheese chicks, 
all kind of stuff and say them can't do no better. We need to stop it. And as a country, and I know I'm going to raise the ire of a lot of people, I have some lovely friends who are teachers, some people whom I respect from the ground they walk on as teachers. But one of the biggest scams that I've been allowed to perpetrate on the citizens of this country is extra lessons. Extra lessons? Now a teacher have whole day in school to teach classes. And you don't do any teaching. Or you hold back a part of a lesson to do extra lessons? Extra lessons at $1,000 per child with 40 kids in the class. And it, it has gotten so bad that the children who don't do extra lessons usually get sidelined and them get little bad vibes reach them and all them kind of something. There. Extra lessons, we're in the modern world. In decent societies that are run orderly and proper because we need to look to them for examples. Do you have schools with a system like that? Extra lessons? We need to stop it, you know. We need to stop. It, you know, we are going to hell in a bank basket, you know. As a matter of fact, I know I'm sure if a bank basket, you know. No basket good or nothing, did they? We have to stop it. We have to be truthful, we have to be honest, we have to be fair, we have to be decent. The kids are also watching us. The kids are watching the politicians, the police. They're watching all of us and seeing the examples that we set. And trust me, some of the examples aren't good. And trust me, you can't tell these kids anything. Don't matter, believe you're smarter than them. They know a lot of things about present day living that we don't know anything about. But I'll tell you, there's a lot of wisdom in experience and a lot of knowledge to be found there as well. But we can't use that to confound them. We have to set a better example. So teachers, I support you getting paid. But step up your game. And some of the things that you're involved in, stop it. You have a commitment to the students when you go to school, put in the work. And this extra lesson thing, let it truly be extra lesson. You cannot reserve time and energy to dedicate to extra lessons by cutting corners during the period when you're supposed to be teaching class. We need to stop it. All right? Minister of Education also need to step up and empower the schools to bring back disciplines. To bring back discipline in the school. It is too loose. Lazy fear can't run everything. You understand? Put it back in the hands of a principal to suspend, expel, run away. Run away both parent and child who don't come to school to learn and believe. Say them can't come to school, come bad up teacher and all these things and get away with it. Put back some power in the hands of the teachers. The principal and the teachers in school so that they can bring discipline there. All right? The society has gone to the dogs, man. You understand? Simply because of this loose living that we want to embark on. That is what I have to say today. My little bit about the this and that. Now, it gives me great pleasure to welcome to COPE, another edition of COPE. Um, a gentleman who is well known on the stage um, for civil activation and I would say I don't want to call him a civil activist I call him more an advocate a politician and you know just an our own good person whom we hear from time to time sounding off on things that he would want to see happen for the country and sometimes me and him don't line up on the same side of the fence but I have a lot of respect for him I call him a friend and it gives me great pleasure to welcoming to COPE. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, please help me welcome Dennis Meadows to COPE. Welcome, Dennis. My pleasure, my friend. How are you today? I'm good. I'm good. Boy, you look good. Blessed. You look good. Blessed. Sometimes looks are deceiving. <laughs> <laughs> uh, with, with all that youthful look, you've been around a little while. Is, is, is the wife responsible for all of that? Partly. Um, <laughs> um, I'm, I'm blessed. Recently, yeah. recently married yeah. to a lovely wife. Mm -hmm. I said to someone recently that I was born in 1966. Yes. But I really start living when I marry my wife in 2015. Wonderful. So in that regard, I am a best man. Yeah. <laughs> and I believe also that what accounts for my 
youthful persona yeah. is that, and you know me a long time. Yeah, of course. I don't carry grudges. Yeah. I would say my piece if I disagree with you. Yeah. If you rub me wrong, like you cuss a bad word or two. Yeah. But that's it. Yeah. I move on. Yes. Expel, expel the thing from your heart. Yeah, man. When you carry people in your your mind and in your heart, yes. it reflects on your exterior. Yes. And you think of anybody you know always um, look bad mind. Yes. And have nothing to say about anybody. Yeah. Just look at their features. Bitterness. They look very bitter. Bitterness. Bitterness. We have to avoid those things. Yes. Uh -huh. The origin, a lot of people know Dennis um, casually. Where, where are you from? Um, you are, are you from St. James? No, Trelawney? I, I, I am from um, born and bred in Kingston. A Kingstonian? I'm of course Kingstonian. You know how long I've known you and I didn't even know many, that. Many, many people are unaware of my um, origins. My, my, my antecedents. Yes. I, because I, 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 although I'm a public person, yes. I, I live a very private life. Though, you know. We noticed that in I, some ways. I, yes, I chose um, <laughs> what to reveal. <laughs> but I, I came in. I came to Montego Bay in 1992. Yes. I was brought here by Volney Free. Yes. To um, manage his, comp his computer company then. Okay. Computer accessories and technical that, support. Cats. That was on Market Street. It was then. on Market Street. Yes. And um, my skills as a as an um, IT professional, was scarce down this side. Yeah. And therefore, he wanted somebody to manage his, his, his company. Yeah. It was the most successful company this side of the island. Yes, man, it was. Uh, and I, I was brought down here. Yeah. And the rest, as I said, the rest is history. The rest is history. I had I a good run. I two years with him and then yeah. move on to my own thing. Doing your own thing. Yes. Um, what led you into politics? It was, it was a natural progression. I inherent in me is the desire to assist, to assist people. Yes. And those who have the misfortune of knowing me, yes. who are friends with me, will tell you <coughs> that I am not a typical citizen, even as a youth. Yeah. If I am walking by and I see a policeman abusing his authority, I will intervene yeah. at the risk of being, if I have been arrested so, so often, yes. I can't even count. Right? Um, I, if I'm driving by and I see a man beating a woman, I will stop my beak and intervene. That's why, that's, that's my nature. So politics was a natural progression. And then God blessed me with an audible voice, yeah. a big mouth, yeah. and coupled with a, with, with a brain. All right, I, I was going to mention that part because <laughs> <laughs> you know, no loose cannon, you have to be connected. <laughs> the mouth has to be connected, connected to something. Brain. Yes. And, and I'm, I'm a thoughtful person. And, yes. and so I find politics and, I, and I, although I'm in the, back, um, the background of politics now, I still believe that politics is the most effective vehicle through, through which one might effect fundamental changes for human, for human life. Yes. Because no matter what, civil society has its role. Yes. As a justice of the peace, you have your role. Yeah. The past have its role. Yeah. At the end of the day, it is policy yeah. that guides social development. Yeah. And the vehicle is politics, no, no, no doubt. All right. I know that you, 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 you are well learned in, in, you know, and would have um, knowledge of our, our history and politics. Um, as you look back to look forward, where would you say it is that we have really gone wrong in our politics? Because where we've ended up, we, we cannot call it commendable and pat ourselves on the back. Whether you support the PNP or you support the JLP and say, boy, we have arrived. Um, some people like to lean on the fact that, well, we're a relatively young nation. But we're a young nation in modern times where we could have progressed way beyond where we are now. But with a lot of skidding and a slippery slope that many have created, we are where we are. What would you account for um, the, 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 the lack of achievement? I, I think there, there's some major achievement. No, I, I don't discount but that at all. near what it should what have it, been. What it should be. So yeah. we, let's not um, shoot ourselves in the Yes. Place. However, I believe that our politics, the way we practice our politics, yeah. has been, in my view, the fundamental cause of our poor performance to date. I believe that we are too tribal as a people. JLP, 
PNP. Mm. If JLP says it, it is wrong because I don't support the JLP and vice versa. Mm. And we we take one step forward, two step back backward. As a result, we have not practiced the, the qualities of continuity over the years. We tend to reverse policies that we figure that is, while it might be good, for, it's for the greater good. It might not be political expedient for us. So it's rescinded or revoked. So over the years, I believe that the way we practice the tribal nature of our politics mm -hmm. and self-serving nature of our politics and short-sightedness, we tend to think as politicians over five years, but no less than five years. We want, we want politicians that think beyond 30 years, yeah. a generation, yeah. in terms of making an impact. Yeah. So that, that kind of short-sightedness and our tribal nature is a fundamentally um, positive factor, I believe, that um, attributes to it. Um, when a good person finds themselves in the political arena and representational politics and step up to the plate, what is it that transforms that person that you see up there full of vim and vigor, moving forward, wanting to do wonderful things for his or her constituency and constituents. What is it that hampers them? Most of them frustration. Frustration with the system. Because sometimes, and, and I will tell you, most people enter politics, I dare say, on both sides of the political divide, enter with a genuine desire to serve. But the moment they become in contact directly with the status quo, the system yeah. as it now exists, oftentimes they become frustrated and resort to make him bother you. Yeah. And, self, and remember, self-preservation is human foremost instinct. <laughs> and sometimes they need to survive within that framework. Yes. Right? Sometimes forces someone to comply. And, and I said people all people all the while that I'll probably while I I recognize the value of politics through social development, yeah. I believe that probably I will not be ever be elected as a politician. Because while I am committed to the Jamaica Labour Party, yeah. I'm not servile in my support of the Jamaica Labour Party. In other words, wrong is wrong, yeah. no matter who do it. Yeah. It is fundamental. And therefore, if we are guided by core principles and, 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 and a level of conviction, yeah. right, that should sustain you. Yes, of course. But it won't get you elected. Because too often I believe that the politics tend to like people who are generally lackeys. Yes. People who, yes sir, yes ma'am. And so, some who almost will resign themselves to the reality mm -hmm. that they have to toe the line in order to be successful. Right. You have to go along, right. get along. So, so... <laughs> And I still believe, and don't get me wrong, because I believe that um, to this very day, I'm still committed to the yeah. JLP. I believe it is the lesser of two evils. Yeah. You know, I'm going to want you to elaborate on that. Well, I'm, I'm going to tell you why. And I can only speak from my experience. Yes, of course. Coming up, it is my observation, because from my youthful, from my youthful days, I'm always an observer of politics. Yes. And it's my experience that, one, I believe that the JLP are the better managers of the economy. Yeah. And for me, that's where the buck stops. Yeah. I can't be a Dennis Meadows. I can't be socially mobile yeah. if the economic environment is not so conducive. Yeah. No matter what I do, yeah. I want an economic environment that is conducive to my own social development. Yeah. Right? So I believe that the JLP is the best managers of the economy. Yeah. They're not perfect beings. Yeah. They have their own ills. Yeah. But for me, the crooks of the matter, yeah. that over the years, the records have demonstrated yeah. that the JLP are the better of the two in terms of economic management. You know, I, I hear that a lot. And I look around, and, and, and it, it really is troublesome mm -hmm. that that is the kind of conclusion that is reached. Because we see the country hobbling along. And... You know, weary 
of injecting my own political bias mm -hmm. in, in, in our conversation. No problem is, with that. Is, is that when we look at the period of 60s, when they say, well, that was a period of growth, enormous growth, and so forth, we look and we saw the majority of people not being successful. Then we move on, you know, just jump to the 80s because the 70s was another matter. Mm -hmm. And I thought we had some wonderful things to, to do in the 70s that escaped us because of a number so of things. So this was a, a somewhat of a social revolution. Yes. Yeah. And, and we had an, great opportunities there to rise. But because we, we did not want to ban our belly and deal with a number of things. We missed an opportunity. Great opportunities there. But we moved to the 80s. Mm -hmm. And I said... The prosperity for black people, again, the masses, wasn't evident in the fact that they were, there was another period being bragged about 5% growth. Mm -mm. So during a period of time where we talk about growth and things like that, it's that the growth don't trickle down to the masses so that we can really say, well, okay, transformation of lives and, and things are really and, happening. And, and people are buying houses, people are buying cars, social mobility, sending their children to universities. And all of these kind of things. Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't translate. So, you know, I, I have a problem with the, 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 the storied mm -hmm. argument about the management of the economy being best done by the JLP. On the other hand, yes, on yes. the other hand, we notice with the PNP over here that there are plenty of lost opportunities as well. So you have some people in the middle, um, like myself, who will say, while I'm supporting, um, I'm supportive of principles um, expounded by the great Michael Manley. I am very worried about what I see happening in the PNP and what I see happening in the JLP. And at the end of the day, what it comes to in terms of governance and the results. I'm not happy with them. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a relatively unhappy citizen, dissatisfied with the politics that I see played out in both the PNP and the JLP. Where is the, the middle ground? And where is the proof of, of this great management of the economy? And would you say that that has now moved us into 2016 and 2018, where we are, that the same still holds that the JLP are good managers of the economy? I, I still contend that, that they are, in fact. And the numbers to date tells you that in yeah. terms of our economic growth. Economic growth is one thing. Yes. Wealth distribution is another. Okay. And it's a totally different discussion. Mm. Right? Because the economy can be buoyant. Yes. But it, it can be a minority benefiting. benefiting. <laughs> so wealth distribution is another different discussion. Mm. Right? But that said, the PMP must be lauded for its social um, policies in the 1970s coming on. Yes. And in fact, at that, at, at that time, they were seen as the party of the working class. Yes. But lately you see a kind of reversal of roles between the two parties. As a blurring of the lines. A blurring of the lines mm. because now the JLP to some extent now, now espouses social policies. A tremendous so amount of it. As a, matter of fact, as a matter of fact, I am going to hand to a man who you are a big fan of. Yeah. Bruce Golding. That, 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 that's my mentor. As a matter of fact, when he stepped in and we're, and we're, we're, we're going to go back there yeah, but yeah, you continue. Yeah, yeah. Right. So the JLP now is called the socialist policy, free education, free health care, and, and, and so on, right? And it, it is the PMP now who is now opposing. Opposing. <laughs> so, so the same goes. There's a, it, it, it's a, it's a, um, at the end, policy is a lifetime, and and, and, and policy is really the art of the expedient. <laughs> but not not that we saying. But and it, it demonstrates though, and I make the point because. The culture we have now in terms of in terms of political support yeah where one regard themselves as die hard yeah it's unnatural yeah because politics itself is dynamic so the pmp that obtains in the 70s not the pmp today no the jlp that obtains in the 60s not the jlp today or even in we're, the 80s we're, we're, we're now led, the jlp is now being led by a very um center right leader yeah right um, one who is transformational in his outlook, yeah. right? And therefore, he has brought to the table some new, and, and in my view, refreshing 
concept of leadership. Yes. Not perfect. Yes. But nonetheless, I believe that Jamaica yearns for a kind of transformational leader that, uh, that, that is prepared to go against the status quo, go against the grain, and, uh, and to exact yes. fundamental changes. I'm going to ask you, since you went there, yes. um, what is admirable about our Prime Minister? One. And two, what would you say is his Achilles heel? I, I, think it's, I believe that what is admirable about him, one, he, he listens and he possess emotional intelligence. He, I believe that he's very in tune to civil society, in tune to public sentiments, and therefore most of his, his own intervention in matters, public issues, mm -hmm. is informed by public sentiments. Mm -hmm. Not to say that everything that the public says you go with as a, as a transformational leader, yeah. sometimes you must direct. Yeah. But not, but, but it's a plus yeah. because over the years we have leaders that almost demonstrate just, just crass arrogance yeah. and insensitivity to the voice of the public. So what he has going for him, yes, he's youthful. Yeah. I believe that he has grown in the position. Let, let, let's be very clear. I did not support him initially. Initially, no man. I, I support him. I support his ascendancy. Yeah. When um. Bruce Gold and more or less anointed yeah. him. I was one of the first public person who um, I was in the Senate at the time. Okay. And supported because I believe that it was a it was a welcomed um, choice. Since then, between that on Aldershaw's race, yeah. it was my view that he was not exerting the kind of energy that I wanted to see okay. as an opposition. And therefore I felt that at the time that um, Shaw would have been the better person yeah but i am pleasantly surprised not surprised pleased yeah okay i am pleased with with the the man i'm the man on the bridge now yeah he has grown in the position he comes across very um prime ministerial prime ministerial very sure of himself yeah very assertive even his voice has changed I, in terms I know, of his I, own I, tone. You know, I noticed that a little because he, he used to be very difficult to listen to him speak. Yeah, yes, he has come a far away and, and, get, and credit must be given to him. Yeah. Because having worked to correct all of that is a recognition that he's prepared to listen and to learn. So you, you think he's in this for the long haul? Uh, let me tell you. <laughs> it should be told because if you look at the PNP now, and let's yes. be brutally honest, there's nobody there I find the, the, the current um, leader of the opposition. Yeah. No, no, nobody question his wit. Yeah. Nobody question his intellectual capacity. Yeah. I believe there's a lot to be done in terms of his own persona and how he yeah. comes across. Yeah. It's not so much exciting mm -hmm. or attractive to the millennials and the younger cohort of the society. Yeah. Don't rule them out, though. Yeah. We are, we, as, 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 as labor rights, we must not dare take that as any comfort. Okay. I can just say that politics, <laughs> right? That the end politics is a lifetime. Yeah, lifetime. Just like our, our prime minister yes. has evolved from then to now yes. to somebody who I admire. Yes. Don't rule it out that... Um, that Peter Phillips Peter has time, time, time to transform. To, to transform. But th that said, the PMP doesn't look attractive now. Yes. The only person I see in it now that I find some favor with and who is a potential leader is my goalling, you know. All right. I mean, right. out of all of them. I, I wanted to hold it right yes, there yes, yes, yes. and get back to the point now. You, t you, you spoke well about the Prime Minister's um, the things to be admired about him. Yes. The Achilles heels. Yeah. What, what do you see are his Achilles heels? Um, it's not anything that, that, that is going to reveal um, an advantage to the PNP people who are watching the program from time no, to no, time. No, 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 no. Um, if, if I have a criticism of, 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 of my leader, there are sometimes when we sometimes listen too much. Yeah. 
and consult too much. Yeah. There's sometimes you have to, because you're the executive. Yes. And sometimes you must take executive decisions. Yeah, decisive action. Yes. So if I have a criticism, I mean, it's probably, um, it's one thing to listen, but sometimes when you listen and consult too often, you diminish even your own um, ultimate decision. Yes. Right? So there's a, there's a place in, and there's a place sometimes, you know, in leadership for autocracy. You know? Yes. Of course. It, it, it can't yeah. always be democratic can't process. always be democratic. Yeah. There's a yeah. reason why you're the leader. Of course. And therefore, you are the executive. And yes. therefore, sometimes you must execute yeah. as an executive. Make, you know? make those decisions. Yeah. But outside of that, I, have not, I, 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 I do have much to... Um, um, he has, doesn't have much deficits. Yeah. Um, I believe that if he continues on the path he's now on, He'll be a force to be, to, re, to be reckoned with in the next general election next general as well and beyond. And beyond. And beyond. All right. With, with that said, yes. um, I lean back to you now and your political goals and ambitions. I know um, for a period of time, you, you run twice, right? I run three times. Three, three, three times? The first yes. one was the first the NDM? No, I didn't run in Chile. Um, you didn't run? I, I was a um, deputy general secretary for the NDM. For the NDM. I didn't, and, I, I, I held no seat for the... Um, all right. Okay. And then they disbanded and, you know, it's a JLP because yes. that was a JLP breakaway. Bruce yes. Golding came back home and you and a lot of other people went back home as well. Um, then you ran where? What was the first place you ran? The first, first time I ever ran is in Trelawney. In Trelawney. Three times I ran in Trelawney. Yeah. Okay. I was and, sent uh, to Trelawney, um, I think back in 2006. Yes. And... Um, replace Marisa Del Rimple, who was moved to South. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, what would you chalk that up to? And I wouldn't want to say, well, okay, all right, this is what has happened, and therefore, I am not even looking to hear that again. That you wouldn't put your hat in the ring and keep moving. You're still a relatively young man. We remember the days when Chang used to take his fair share of beating yes. from yeah, Tolo and so forth. From Hanover to St. James, yeah. right? Two and two. People who remember that. I think he had lost about three elections the, too. The, 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 for, the unfortunate thing is, is um, let's use Trelawney as a, a reference point. Yes. I ran in Trelawney the first time, and when I went to Trelawney, I had no connection to Trelawney. Mm -hmm. I went there as a total stranger. Ninja. Anybody knowing Dennis Meadows was as a result of probably my um, public um, profile. Well, yes. But not as a person. Soon, yeah. I, I, the, the party asked me to go there on, on, on the removal of Marissa Dalrymple, yes. who was the caretaker then, mm -hmm. to Southern Trelawney, which is a more favorable yeah. seat. And I remember the Prime Minister then, um, not the Prime Minister, the, the leader, leader of, of opposition, the leader of the party asked me then, and the deputy leader down here, mm -hmm. consulted with me and asked me to temporarily yeah. to fill the gap for the elections. Yeah. I worked my... Yes, I know I that. Answer. Tailbone. I, 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 I worked Trelawney. Mm -hmm. I visited literally every house in northern Trelawney. Anybody can tell you that. I walked. There are some places when I went, they have never seen a politician come there before. Because I believe, I'm a, I'm a traditionalist, I believe in, the, 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 I believe in meeting my voters yes. at least once yes. during the election yes. campaign. At least once. Yes. And, if, and if I go to your home and you're not there, I leave a calling card. Yeah. Right, so, I was able to amass over 8,000 votes in that first round as a wow. stranger. Yes. There are people in parliament today. In fact, Dr. Nigel Clark more recently yes. got a little over 4,000 votes. Can you imagine? And he's in parliament. Yes. I got over 8,000 at Silgan Rich Parliament. Yeah, uh, I such, tell you. Such is politics. Yes. I then, I, I went the other side short term. Mm -hmm. Then I became so much involved in the... The, 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 the constituency. Yes. The people loved me. I love them. I respected them. Their, their mutual respect. Mm -hmm. And I developed a passion for the um, for for Trelawney, not, um, or particularly Northern Trelawney. So I decided to stay there. Yes. Because one of the, the fear that people had then was that I was just coming using the constituency as a vehicle. Yes. To run and then. And leave. So I committed to them that I would have remained. And I yes. remained. Yes. I ran again in 2011, mm -hmm. a, a, a snap election that yes. is. Yes. And um, 
we weren't prepared as a party generally. Yeah. So we just about in the, in the middle of our, our yes. tenure as government. Yes. Oh yes. I remember that. And um, I lost then. Mm -hmm. This time around in 2016, remember I, res I resigned yes. after 2011. I re resigned from the constituency. Yes. As I felt that I think two time was enough. Mm -hmm. I decided to focus on business mm -hmm. and family. And then on the eve of the last election, the party asked me again to... Um, to step up to the bridge. To step up on the bridge, which I, I was able to reduce a deficit of 2,700 to 449. Yeah, it was a close, it was a and close a election. Very, I mean, mm. in, in a very short period of time. Period of time. And I still believe that if I'd gotten more help, yes. I would have been able you could to, have reversed that. to reverse the um, and, and, and turn and the parties the seat, of, yeah. uh, of, of, of the constituency. Having run, um, and, but still, I do, having lost, there's still a measure of victory. Yeah. Because I've now transformed my team and I. Yeah. We have transformed Northern Trelawney from a marginal constituency in political terms. Yes. Right? From a safe seat. Mm -hmm. Since 1989 to 2016, it was regarded as a safe seat. PNPC. PNPC. We have turned it now into something possible. Very possible. Yes. So, so I believe that, for me, three strikes and you're out. I believe that the constituency now needs fresh legs, yeah. new energy, new ideas. So if asked, yes. you would rather turn your attention somewhere else as opposed to somewhere where you have built a tremendous amount of political not, not, fortune? Not necessarily. Um, if, if the party within its wisdom feel that after doing their own analysis, mm -hmm. feel that my presence there would aid to the fortunes of the party yes. and to the constituency. Mm -hmm. I would I would so consider that when that time arrives. But as we speak, I am focused now on my family and business. I'm a, yes, I'm a recently um I'm a grub to the marriage thing now. Yes, I got married um, two years ago. Yes, and um, as I said to a friend of mine recently that I continue to look at my marriage certificate for the expiry date. <laughs> and then I realize I'm loved for life. <laughs> so well, I read politician. <laughs> <laughs> I never heard that one before. <laughs> but I'm blessed with um having said that, I'm blessed with um a lovely wife. Yes. Um I, uh, if you want somebody to watch your back, if you want someone, a partner to stand beside you. Yes. Check my wife. All right, you found that. Yeah. We're going to take a short break and when we come back, we're going to touch some more on your political ambitions and quite a number of things and how you see the landscape. Cope will be right back, ladies and gentlemen. Do stay tuned for more. Some businesses are the best kept secret in town, known only to a few friends and family. Advertising just can't be too much. Otherwise, Coca-Cola, KFC, and Burger King all the big companies would cease to advertise. Instead, they advertise, advertise, and then advertise some more. Follow their good examples. And let CTV introduce you to affordable, effective advertising. Don't delay. Call us today at 326-8747 or 396-6060. Advertise so they know. Advertise to grow. All right, welcome back to COPE. And we're talking to Dennis Meadows. Of course, remember, we come to you from the Hard Rock Cafe where we film um, this program, COPE, and it stands for Communities Own and Personal Elevation. So we talk to people, we talk about politics, we talk about entertainment, and we talk about a lot of things, stories of public interest. Um, my guest today, Dennis Meadows, is more than just a politician. He's also a person of public interest. Um, excuse me. Earlier on, we spoke about the your involvement, your as a as an advocate, a social advocate. That's part of it. There's this cafe 
what has happened to it? Because Capi, since, you've, Capi, Capi, since Capi. your voice um, has not been there, it has been rather quiet. What has happened with that? Um, when I decided to um, move back into the political um, arena, arena mm -hmm. I felt it was necessary to, to um, give up the yeah. position of convener. Mm -hmm. I, to this very date, I can't find somebody. The, the group is still there yeah. in terms of its, its, its work, more, more on um, social media. Mm -hmm. But I can't find somebody who's prepared to take, come to the fore. Yeah. Everybody you speak to wants to work behind the scenes. Nobody wants to put up because of fear of victimization. Yes, yes, yes. And, and you know, more often than not, you know, our fears are more perceived than real. Than real. Because I can tell you, I have been a youth activist coming right up. And I cannot say that I've ever been victimized because of politics or because of the views of yes, my own. Yes. I've never. In fact, the, the, the truth be told, that most of the benefit I've gotten out of life in terms of my own development and trying to do business is, is more so under the, um, the opposing party. Yeah, it comes to your activism. And, 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 and to the opposing party, yeah. so you feel that because you speak against a party, yeah. that party will come to power and yeah. victimize you. Yeah. So therefore you feel your cow and you, you want to work behind the scenes. So that's what's affecting yeah. Tappy. I am now almost thinking seriously of taking it back up. Yes. Because there's a need for it. Um, and there are people ask, I remember when I was, was heading Cappy, there are those who argue that um, I'm a politician, so it was, it was um, inappropriate for me to lead a, 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 civil, a society, civil group. Which, and I ask them, where in the book? Once being, I tell people all the while, that being a supporter of the JLP yeah. does not rob me of my sense of objectivity, yeah. a sense of fairness, yes. and a sense of what is right or wrong. Ah, indeed. And once people, once you can demonstrate that, mm -hmm. right, you will accrue to your credibility. Yes. So it's not a question of whether you're a JLP or PNP. Once people respect you, that you are you're prepared to call it as it is, yeah. they will deem you credible. You know, um, it, it's, it's indeed a pity, and we shouldn't lose that group because um, it, it did a lot of work under your direction. Short time, it did um, that. Yes, because it kept the, the issues very much at the forefront and, and kept government and people in authority on their toes about being responsible mm -hmm. um, to the citizenry uh, of the country, which is, which is what we want more than anything else. I promise you we'll be back. Well, we'll be back. indeed, we, it, that is something that we would indeed welcome because... It has been missing in From the, the landscape. landscape. Yes, man, it's uh, a it's uh, a it's uh, a watchdog, and and you know a time when when a society given to so so many excesses really needs something like that. Um, as you look at the political arena, um, we say we move from the, the the past and now we're into pretty much the present and looking. What what will it take to shape? our future and to move us forward. We, we have a lot of politicians right now, many of them 70 and beyond, um, that I am sure some of them, through their own good sense, will be looking to resign. And new blood will, will, will have to be found. Are we at the point of progress and prosperity? Or are we in some trouble and what will it take to make the transformation and to get us to a point where we can see progressive things happening that will lead people to prosperity too? You know, the government's mantra is, is um, partnership for prosperity. Yes. And I'm, 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 let me just make it clear, I don't speak for the JLP, yes. nor do I speak for the government. Yes. I am not in the inner sanctum of the government yeah. and I'm not in the inner circle of the party of the party so therefore mm. and I hold no um executive position, position. so therefore yeah. for that for clarity yes I don't speak for the GLP however the there's a light at the end of the tunnel and it's an oncoming train <laughs> we we are and give credit and we must call it as it is yes 
some measure of credit must be given yeah. to the opposition yeah. for steering the boat during the last tenure yeah. to now, yeah. which we have, co we, the, the Prime Minister's um, take come on board with a politics of continuity yeah. and he have, he have demonstrated his resolve to ensure that the country don't go back on the path of fiscal um, recklessness. Yeah. Our growth projection in terms of five and four yeah. has been impeded by a number of factors, including natural disasters mm -hmm. and so on. Crime and, and violence. Crime and violence. But if we remain committed on that path, I believe that in the next 10 or so years, Jamaica should see some semblance of a stable economy and an environment conducive for growth and consequently social mobility. All right. In 10 years' time, mm -hmm. uh, many of us will be major senior citizens. Um, should it take that long for us to see some transformation Jamaica is an island um, of 2.78 million people, depending on who does the county. Yeah, does the county. <laughs> Shouldn't we see a reflection um, within our society of, of better living conditions, better standard for health care, security, transportation and the like? Because we complain a lot about the roads, we complain a lot about the transportation system, the health care system. You know, all of these things are in dreadful condition. And so you look at some of our hospitals, you know, you believe they are 1960s and 1950s and, and, and you know, some, some very dark periods. So, um, 10 years really is a long time. Is that really what it would take for, for us to start really, really seeing some... Let's be real. Our roads can't be fixed. Yeah. We'll not be able to provide world standard health care unless we are social services for that matter yes unless we're able to grow the economy yes if our gdp remain marginal yes there, there was, there's nothing to you we can't continue to borrow what we're paying for you know over the years successive governments yeah we have spent more than we earn mm -hmm. right and have developed this appetite Right? For extravagance. Yes. And if we were borrowing money for capital development, yes. building bridges, building social infrastructure and so on, is one thing. Yes. But more often that we borrow money to pay to pay back money. Yes. And therefore, until we find ourselves in a situation where our debt is not a millstone around our necks. And therefore we have enough money now as we speak. I think 40 or nearly 50 cents out of every dollar now. Yes. If you look at the last budget, is is debt repayment? Is the debt repayment because constitutionally, the first call on the on the budget is debt. Debt. Right. But until we're in a position to do that, all what you just talk about a while ago is a pipe dream. Pipe dream. Is it rocket science though to grow the economy? No, it is not. But I said to you. The economy, you know, the Jamaica economy is analogous to your own household. Yes. If you have your own household and your wife earns $100,000 a month, you earn $150,000. That's mm -hmm. probably less yeah. than your wife. Right? So let's say you're, in, you're, you're between the both of you, you earn $200 for the $200,000 for the for month. The month yeah. But when you look at your, next, your expenditure, some of it unnecessary. Yeah. Right? you realize you have a deficit of $50,000. Yeah. And instead of cutting some of those expenditure and live within all your means to kind of reduce your ex exposure to, to, um, mm. to, debt. to debt and credit, you continue to do the same thing. Eventually, you know, that house can pop down. Yeah, man. By all means. So it's the same principle that apply yes. to the overall Jamaican economy. So are we on that path or do you see reasons for optimism? We are on a self-imposed path yeah. by the IMF, yeah. regrettably so, yeah. because what the IMF is asking us to do should have been naturally done over the years. Our own sense of, 
um, fiduciary responsibility yeah. and judicious management should have compelled us to live within our means that there are smaller island states that are living but yes, have, don't yes. have nothing of in terms of resources natural mm -hmm. resources that we have are living far better than us so i believe that our politics that we have practiced over the years until we are prepared to change that politics we will forever be in the position that we are regrettably well um <laughs> you know i i sometimes tumble um to find words to to express myself at the level of disappointment that i see i don't see the kind of creativity that government i'm um, show from time to time and i think they're less than honest in their dealings with the public and the various responsibilities and what are to be done i i long to see the kind of leadership that has the kind of creativity that would encourage them to mobilize the nation inspire and inspire the nation to fall in line. I, I i drive through some communities wealthy communities with some horrible roads and if government, governments were able to motivate the citizenry, you know a lot of these roads could be fixed through voluntary work. True. One of the things that I understand and I see it and hear it being expressed is that government cannot come to people and ask them to do certain things. When, when they look, they see government wasting money. And waste is obvious. Which, which puts us in the very position you, you alluded to. Um, you spoke to in your preamble on the show in terms of our yeah. teachers. The present yes. public sector with yes. negotiation. Yeah. And I agree with you. There is no other group within the public sector that is more deserving than a, a special pay yeah. than our teachers. That's right. I taught for five years in my life. Yes. Right? It was my full-time full job, it was yeah. a part-time, but I, I, it gave an appreciation for what attends the teachers yeah. in the classroom. Mm -hmm. That said, the government can't turn bread from stone. Yeah. We can't spend more than we earn. But what is killing us as government and successive governments too, as politicians, yeah. Yeah. we have lost credibility with, 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 um, with our people. That's right. So because they watch over the years where we have squandered money mm -hmm. in the name of winning votes. Yes. Right? When we come to them, no one says that we can't pay you more than we, than, than, than we can afford. They are taking us seriously. Yes. Because they look and they see the, they, they see the opposite. Mm -hmm. Right, so we have lost credibility, and that is why the, the, the negotiations are becoming a bit um, tenuous. Mm -hmm. That said, I believe that there are teachers who are teachers of my era and your yeah. generation, yeah. where they had a passion for the classroom. Of course, they will ensure that you get it. You get it, Dennis. You understand what that does, Dennis? And, uh, and, 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 if, and if, you, if you don't get it, they stay back yes. at their cost yes. and sit and, and talk to you. You remember those days? Of course. They, they, there's a of course, cohort of man. teachers we have now. Yes. Some of them don't belong in the classroom. None at all. They don't belong. I'll give, I'll give you a story. In, when I ran in, Ch in Chilani in 2007, I was doing my house house and I went to a particular house in Clarkstone. And I knocked at the door politely, and somebody came out. Yeah. Move from my yard. Me don't talk to them. I'm pain, pain. I'm in mean, a very aggressive, vulgar, uh, yeah. crass, boorish behavior. Yeah. The kind of dirty girl yeah. mentality. I was shocked. And when I, I said, calm down, and she, the only thing she didn't do is take water up yeah. in her basin and, and, and throw on me and run me from the thing there. I subsequently learned that that was a teacher. Frightening is so at the primary level. 
Shocking. As a teacher. Shocking. And to add insult to injury, there was a teacher's day subsequently. And I learned that she, uh, in teacher, the, the principal at the time invited me to address the, um, the, the teachers in the staff yeah. room. Nothing political. Yeah. Just a simple... Um, yeah. And she was in the classroom. In the, in the, in the, yeah, the staff in the quarters. Gathering, of course. In the gathering. And while I'm addressing the... The teachers. The teachers. She and another one got a call. And they were on the phone while I was addressing the thing. Yeah. Much to the annoyance of her colleagues, of their colleagues. And the principal. And, and the principal. You could see the embarrassment on their faces and the annoyance. And it reached a point where I couldn't take it any longer. And I reprimanded them. Of course. And when I did, they, they both of them kissed their teeth and walked out of the classroom. Yeah. And the rest of the, they are applauded. Um, applauded. You know what? You know what's the worst thing? The, 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 you know what's the worst thing that happened with that? Is that the behavior would go unpunished? Because had she been taken to task, then right away it sends a message to others that that is not appropriate behavior. And, and you thought that teachers would have been more enlightened? No. Because I, anybody knows me. I'm, I'm, I, 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 in fact, I really even campaign in, in yeah. colors. Yeah. When I campaign, I try much as not to wear yeah. colors. Yeah. Can you want people to feel comfortable yes, when you, you knock at the door? And that was it's very instructive for me yeah. that these are the people some of them and, and, and let's yeah. not paint of course, a, of course, a, a tar brush of course on not. every teacher of course the majority not. of them in my view of course not. are hard working very committed of course and not. deserving of good pay yeah. but there are others yes who i believe should have they don't they're not only not deserving of good pay they should be in the classroom period period i know some wonderful teachers right. and i hesitate not in saluting them and talk about the fact that well teachers should be regarded as heroes within our communities. The transformation of South Korea was only made possible mm -hmm. by the elevation of the status of teachers within that society. And right now, society, um, South Korea is enjoying first world status. Yes. Mm -hmm. Dennis, education and the development of our people is not something that governments can continue to feel comfortable in saying that they cannot afford. It's something that governments, whether PNP or JLP, cannot afford to not afford. And that is why, and I go back to what I'm saying, just like your household, there are certain expenses yes. and certain costs that you as a parent or householder can't afford not to afford. Yes. You can't not to afford your mortgage. That's right. You can't not afford to, your light. Yes, and food. And food. Similarly, I believe that there are costs within our government that we can't afford not to afford. Yes. Education yes, is one of that's them. That's right. Health is one of them. Yeah, that's right. That is why Security. We, and that is why when the government espouse the policy of free education and, yes. and universal access to health care, yes. I supported it because yes. I believe it's an investment mm, yes. in your social, in your people. Of course. And therefore, I believe that we find money to do any other thing. But I believe that investment in education, yeah. part of the problem we now suffer, you know, in terms of our high crime rate, yes. especially violent crimes, mm. is a direct consequence of illiteracy, you know. Yes. I believe and when, that. And when I say education, I don't mean math and English and academics. Not I'm talking necessarily. I'm about holistic education yes, in transformational. terms of the do's and don'ts of life. Of course. Life skills. Values. Yes. Our parents didn't have riches or gold spoon to pass on to us. No. You know the values they pass, pass on to us? On. The Tremendous. do's and, and the don'ts, don'ts of life. Yes. That even to this very day, when I am even doing wrong, yeah. and I know it is wrong, yes. there's an inner voice that says it is wrong. Yes. You have to move what away is from missing that. in our society today is that inner voice called a conscience. Yes. Our young people now are devoid of conscience. But if the society within itself and the operatives they see yes. don't have social conscience, yes. um, they won't be able to talk to the young people. And that's what we see right now, that the, those who are supposed to set the examples are not reaching the young people because they're not setting proper there's, examples. There's not much role models. There's, there's not much role models. When, when, um, when a student can walk into a classroom and see a teacher dress a certain way, 
don't get me wrong, I like my ladies looking yeah, well and appropriate, problem. but there are things you, are, you choose yeah, what to wear. Time and place. Our values are gone. gone. Yeah. You see what they're wearing at funerals now? That's, so that's, funerals a, that's now? another thing. That's right? another thing. And what we, you, see? There's no, we have lost our sense of what is appropriate. Anything goes, and then it adds in my view to the whole degeneration of the society. Certainly. But one other thing um, I, I, I would ask you, because I put a tremendous amount of responsibility on government. And I believe you go in to government to govern. The root word of government is govern. To govern is to rule. A lot of things that we see going by the wayside is because of what I consider a lazy fear society where, as we say, anything goes. Don't you believe, as a person intimately involved in governments at various levels, mm -hmm. that government should play a stronger role in stamping on some of these things? No, 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 no. Leadership dictates behavior. It is leadership, and government is our leader. Yeah. Successive governments over the year, we have yeah. not paid much attention to the breakdown. In social values. Give respect to P.J. Patterson. Yeah. P.J. started a, a program, Values, values and, and attitude, attitude. And he was coughed at. Yeah. And fairly so. No, we are realizing the true value of that. Because but you know, you know that program. That. You know that program wasn't pushed in the way that it, it wasn't. It, it was announced, pronounced, Co and all of that we, kind we, of stuff. We, but it wasn't pushed. We couldn't see the value yeah. of it. But what is missing from our society now is, in essence, yes. values and, and attitude. And until that is inculcated and cultivated in our young minds, yes. the, the future of this culture is very dark. You know. And, 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 and I'm not an alarmist. Yes. What I'm seeing obtains outside there. You, you walk on the road. As students, students walk past you, curse the, the biggest bad word in front of you. You dare say to them, don't do that. Right. They'll attack you. That's right. You know, um, it leads me, just prior to coming here to, see, to do this interview, I heard of an incident and I happened to see it. On, 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 on social media, I'm not sure if you're aware the of Green it. Island? With, no, with the policeman. We I, can I, touch I, on the, the Green Island I, one. I, I saw that, I saw the that. The policeman, right in the vicinity of BOS, and a, a bus, what, what they call loader man, side man, backup man or whatever. And the policeman came across and more or less, I don't know the exchange, but obviously there was some, some exchange there. And what I saw transpired, you know, really, I was taken aback. But you know something? A lot of people in our society jump and say, the police, the police, the police. Hear my point of view on that? And I, I am not afraid to state it right here. And then that police man had a challenge on his hands. What I saw unfolded. Is that what our citizens are supposed to come to? And some people are going to say two wrongs don't make a right. But then again, we have to wonder what recourse did this police officer have? When he approached the young man to more or less arrest him, you know, back him off, more or less chucked off his hand and whatever, took out his button and struck a blow. Obviously, from where we see that foot, that is a broken foot. I, I look at the video, and I'm not satisfied that, based on what I saw, yes. that, 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 that button was, was the, um, the cause of the, um, the, the, twisted, the foot. twisted foot. Yes. I, and that button could not be twisted, could have not twisted that foot. You think, like, you no, think in, in, in falling think down, fell down, fell down that, that, I, looked, I saw no direct hit yeah. from the button. And okay. I looked at the thing there. So, yeah, okay. in fairness to the, to the officer. The officer. And also, give credit to the officer, you know. I bash them when, when yeah. I'm ready, but I give credit. Because we have ignored the small offenses yes. over the years. Yes. They have graduated and we have, we have developed a culture of impunity. Yes, yes, yes. We would do anything without care. Yes, yeah. No, an officer must, de uh, is, a, a policeman is deserving of respect. Of course. Once he gives it. Yes. Right? Once he gives it, yes. you must deal with that police of a respectful. You can't tell a policeman bad word. Yes. Right? And, and, and seek to be chucking him off too. Precisely. And resisting arrest. Yeah. Right? As, as my granny said, when you're in a, you, you and come in and a tiger mode. 
your own sense of preservation to yeah. say to you when you're on your line or you take time, take time, out, take time, pull it out. out. Right? You know? So I'm not prepared to, 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 to um, in fact, I'm prepared to commend it. Yes. The police man in this regard. <laughs> because for fulfilling his duty. Yes, yes. Right? If he had possibly used expletives toward the um, the gentleman. Yes. Like I said, it's a totally different matter. Yes. But what I saw from there, I am not prepared to condemn yes. the policeman. I feel like in, in fact, in, it's probably deserving of credit. The social problem we have, that a citizen properly socialized and I include that in the education. We would not have that kind of a confrontation. No, no. no. The, 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 the quality of our citizenry is going down, 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 and that is a direct result of education and training. A lot there are. A lot there are. Mm -hmm. Something must be done, and I put the onus on governments. One of the things, you see a young Prime Minister like Andrew Holness, I expect him to step out with vim and vigor to address many of these things that have gone and begging. That is what I look for and that is what I, I you know, when, when the election was won and I said to myself, you know, sometimes people sit down and want governments to fail based on what side you're on. PNP want JLP to fail, JLP want PNP to fail so that there could always be these changes or whatever. I have long been looking at the situation. I say every time an administration fail, its opportunity is lost. Agreed. It's opportunity. Five years lost, ten years lost, and so forth. So all of us need to get together and want and work for the success of our government because the success of mm -hmm. governments mm -hmm. will lead to the success of a nation. And as long as they are in the right direction and, and producing developing proper policies and not being wasteful and all of, and taking the citizenry in mind i want governments to succeed you understand because i'm at a situation now where i'm more living for my son who happens to live here my daughter don't live here than even for myself you understand we want good things for ourselves but we want better things for our children you know so they told the prime minister's age i think he's the man on the bridge now and i will be recognized that he is in an enviable position yes. on the bridge to effect some fundamental changes. Why I say that? Because he's youthful. Yeah. Millennial, millennials tend to relate to him. To him. Yeah. And therefore, he has, he has an opportunity to appeal to their, their senses. Yeah. Right? And I believe that the, the whole program that he has implemented in terms of um, engaging unattached youth yeah. is a start in the, in the right direction. Yeah, sure. Because when you, when you have people engaged, you have an opportunity to, 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 inform to impact their lives. To impact their lives. Yeah. So the whole program provides some hope in that regard. But what I'd what I love to see is a full program that speaks to re-socialize our young minds. Yeah. I, I, I believe we have a lost generation here. Mm. I accept that. Yes, yes. We have a lost generation. But it's not lost hope. Mm -hmm. We need, in my view, to take steps to start the process of re-socializing our young people in terms of putting them in a position that where they have respect for authority, mm -hmm. they respect their role as citizens, right? And also um, letting them aware yes. of their own responsibilities yes. as, as citizens and young adults. You touch a little bit on uh, about the Green Island incident um, where, the, where, where the kids were attacking this other student and I think the, the student ran into the bus, they smashed the windows and so forth. A couple of them were arrested and a um, few of them were arrested and they're still looking for um, some of them. Give us, give us a little take on it because you were, you're more like, without, because generally, we speak generally without knowing the specifics. And the specifics aren't necessary. It was clear as day. Yeah, students no. behaving in a way that you don't expect students to be. I don't even want to know what proceeded. Of course. Nothing. Because yeah. the behavior is, is atrocious. Of course. And, and unacceptable. Totally by any, unacceptable. By any standard. Yes. But it's also man, a direct manifestation of the overall breakdown within our society. Yes where schoolboys can feel in the in the full glare 
of public scrutiny. Carrie Chapa, Mashet, right, boxing up um, a conductor, which mm. probably will only yeah. that's, that, that, that's a clear demonstration yeah. of lack of respect yeah. and lack of uh -huh. regard for uh -huh. anything civil. And, and come right down to criminal behavior. And oh, they, those are prime graduates, yes. prime graduates for, um, for criminal, um, criminal conduct. Where do we go from here? Leadership. And, and when I say leadership, you know, because sometimes we just put everything at the government, yes. at the community level. Yes. As adults, those are who were, were the beneficiaries of, beneficiaries of mm -hmm. good upbringing. Yes. We now need to lend yes. that our kind of time. Support. Uh -huh. Just as the piece that I believe can mm -hmm. play a significant role. Yeah. Many of us take, we, we, we get designation of justice of the peace for, for profile. <laughs> a tremendous we don't, understand the, we don't understand the role of the justice of the peace. Yeah. It's not about just putting JP behind your name and yeah. walking with your nose in the air. Well, anyway, I'm going, to, I'm going to launch off into that now by saying what well, they're acting JPs. Mm -hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm. Acting justice of the peace. Yes, yes. <laughs> We have a lot of actors on our, on, on our landscape, in the politics, in business, and a lot of things. Yes. And we need to get out of the acting and get real. But our society, I believe, can only be transformed once the responsibilities are taken seriously and the authorities do what it is that is required of them to ensure that people behave themselves. Mm -hmm. Myself, you, sir, um, our director and everything, for the greater good of the society. What I do that is of benefit to me and it's of harm to you should not be permitted and it should be made known by the authorities within a heartbeat um, much of the conflicts that i see taking place in the society I, that i call a society of conflicts because the authority is absent the police don't readily run in and quell something that is about to start or just started at this level it's when it is full-blown and has created catastrophe that the authorities come in. Why is it that we have so much absence of governance and authority in the lives of the because people? Because there's an absence of accountability. The lack of accountability has pervaded every facet of our society. You just make reference to the police. Yes. You have a constable out there. There's nobody supervising he or she. Mm. Nobody. You have a teacher in the classroom, the head of the department, can talk to, to, to her subordinates. Yes. There's no accountability. So go back, as I said, we develop a, a rising out of that. A direct result is a culture of impunity. Yes. Right? Nobody is held accountable. And nobody holds themselves accountable either. And until we rec we, 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 we reintroduce a system of, of, of accountability make reference to the po police force i this is my wish that while the police the police service commission yeah has the authority in terms of hiring commissioners, the commissioners and so, so forth on, i would have hoped that in this dispensation having having now um recruited a new police commissioner yeah major anthony anderson anderson mm -hmm. Major General that is. Yeah. I would have hoped that the authority, whether through legislation or otherwise, divest someone's responsibility directly into the commissioner. Yeah. Where he has that authority to get rid of some people in the force, yeah. you know. Yeah. Just like the just like the teaching profession. Yes. And just like in politics. Yes. There are politicians that we have now don't belong in politics. Yes. Need to get rid of some of them. There are teachers you have in the classroom that don't belong don't belong in the classroom need to get rid of some of them police in the force that don't belong in the police and the need to get rid of some of them it, it needs to be purged yes i would tell you the majority of those yes. within those groups are hard working and committed good, people. good sent committed people but they also have been complicit yeah in their own silence because they see the wrong and they keep quiet right and i and, and, and i made reference to, to that recently the, the police tend to um encouraging um citizens to tell what they know wow but there's no rigid other rigid code of silence yeah than in the police force 
nobody tells nothing about an, an, anybody yeah. it's quite the mentality yeah but at the same vein they will be asking the citizens to tell what they know and that don't inspire any confidence because inspire, the people the don't it, it, there's a deficit of trust as well and the people are not Precisely. inclined to share information with police when they're not sure where, where the information will end until we we start holding people unaccountable when i say accountability you know yeah even among our politicians yeah because we as supporters too often yeah don't hold our politicians accountable, accountable. because i'm pmp pmp can do nothing wrong ah. because you're a jlp jlp can do nothing wrong and you defend the indefensible because you are a supporter of the party and, 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 and I use the analogy all the while, Warren, that the relationship between a politician and a voter yeah. is analogous to that of a man and a woman. Yeah. If you beat your wife every day, you don't take care of the house. Yeah. You don't contribute to the house. You come home late at night without due, yeah. without, due, without due reason. Drunk. Right? You come home drunk. You mm. beat her. Mm. But if every night she come home and walk my legs and say she love you. Yeah. You will forever be bad. Yes. Because you die because she die hard in love with you. Can you imagine that? You take her for granted. Can you imagine? You see the that? moment you start hear about Joe about? Yes. You start being able yes, and bring home roses. Course, of course. That's the of same course. thing. That's the same relationship between a politician and a voter. <laughs> so when you remain die hard to the JLP or die hard to the PNP, yes. they will take you for granted. granted. You can be committed. Yes. You can be a committed supporter. Yes. But not be a die hard servile supporter i'll tell you that's plenty that we have spoken about it and um you know there's hope all right there's hope in even the program that we're talking about the whole program and there's hope that jamaica will be a better place i am going to before i do the closing remarks i'm going to give you the last word what would you like to see happen within the next two years within our politics that way we can go and say a job well done by this young administration um our youthful prime minister that you find a lot to admire in. i'd love to see an environment called jamaica yeah. that within the next five or so years mm -hmm. be a place where every man or woman every child feel that they have a vested interest in this country mm -hmm. growth and that can only come through leadership yeah. as I said I believe that Prime Minister Andrew Owens at this point in time is the man on the bridge mm -hmm. and so far in my view in my view he has demonstrated some resolve that I admire yeah. and I believe that if he continues on that path that sometimes you know let me just be real sometimes the prime minister is only one man mm -hmm. but he does if he doesn't have the support around him yeah. make, it makes it difficult but at this juncture I, I i believe that he has the kind of support he has the right support around him mm -hmm. coupled with that i believe that he himself has demonstrated that he wants to see this country remember there's a post-independent leader mm -hmm. and therefore it comes with some new ways of doing things some new thinking and so yeah. on which is transformational that said he also has to get buy-in from the pnp yeah from the independent from ndm and from you yeah and that buy-in can only comes with exuding a persona of humility yeah one that says i'm prepared to listen mm -hmm. one that says i am your prime minister too yes caring i one, care one jamaica regardless of your political strike one jamaica i as Anjones, wants one jamaica yeah that every man by the sweat of his brow can eat bread ah indeed a place where we can live yes and do be, grow and do business oh indeed well said dennis it has been a pleasure talking to you today and cope and remember we come to you from the hard rock cafe um not much more to say it has been more than a mouthful 
And I want you to stay tuned until next week when we'll have another program. Thank you very much My for taking the time to chat with us. Thank you, my friend. One love.